It is 3 o'clock Central Standard Time. That means... That means it's time for us to begin our service today. Amen. Amen. We're so glad that we've reached another Lord's Day. And we're able to come in and worship God, offer Him the thanksgiving, the gratitude, the praise that He today is so worthy of. Amen. I want to read for us as a call to worship this afternoon. Psalm number 47. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is terrible. The term terrible here literally is translated awe-inspiring. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved, Selah. God is gone up with a shout, the shout with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises unto our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. God reigneth over the heathen. God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. Amen. Amen. We read that today as a call to worship from the word of the Lord. Let's go to the Lord this afternoon in prayer as we open our service today. Master, how much we love you and how grateful we are, Lord, for the opportunity to come into the house of the Lord of that place which we have set aside as a sacred space, that place which we have set aside as a sanctuary, a meeting place, as it were, where the people of God might come, where they might find peace and respite, where they might be rejuvenated, O oh God, in your presence. Lord, today we've come into this place as always, with great anticipation, in hope, God, of a mighty move of the Holy Ghost. We don't just desire today, Lord, that we would come in and perform some ritual or some form, but rather, O oh God, that in the process of our worship, in the process of our preaching, in the work, in the process of our praying, that the Spirit of the Almighty would descend upon us. Lord, that you would touch our hearts, touch our spirit, revive our soul this hour. For Lord, we need you. We need you today in the church as we've never before needed you. Oh God, how we need a mighty move of the Holy Ghost in the houses of God today. How we need a mighty move of the Holy Ghost in the midst of your people today. Lord, I pray, God, that by the end of this service, we'll be able to leave this place and declare, I have been in the presence of God. I've been in the presence of the Lord. We ask all this today, Master, in none other than Jesus' wonderful, wonderful name. Amen. Praise God and amen. You might notice today that I have done a little bit of moving things around and changing things around. I'm trying to help our video uh, not look quite so cluttered up here at the front. As many of you know, for the past year plus, uh, we have been meeting in our home. Uh, Tommy and I have taken our sunroom. Uh, it's not the biggest room in the house.
but it is off to the side and you know we're able to set it aside primarily as the sanctuary to use for the church and uh, we've turned it into something of a sanctuary it does not hold a huge number of people but at the moment we don't have a huge number of people so it is sufficient for our present uh, membership and I hope and pray to God that it doesn't always remain that way. I'd like very much for things to change. Mm -hmm. uh, I would, I'd love to have even 50 people in the city of Dallas who love the Lord, who love the one God, Jesus' name, apostolic message, who wanted to see a work of God uh, take place in this city that welcomes and affirms all people who sincerely seek to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ in truth. And uh, I'd love to have even 50 people, because I'm going to tell you right now, if we ever got to 50 people, we would rock this city off its foundation. I've said this before many times, and I'm going to say it again and again and again and again and again. Folks, the enemy has worked against this church from minute one. Because while there are a bunch of people in this town that just don't, don't seem to get it, that just don't seem to understand, that we are in a spiritual battle where this is not a matter of, you know, you pick a church to go to and you go to that church and, you know, you get mad at the preacher so you leave and all this childish, idiotic garbage that I've seen going on since I've been in affirming uh, ministry and I say since I've been in affirming ministry because I can tell you right now when I was pastoring in the mainstream uh, straight folks had their issues they had their problems they were imperfect as any people are imperfect as any Christian is imperfect but I'm going to tell you something we didn't go through all this garbage I didn't see all this drama and all this foolishness that I've seen since we've started to work in the LGBT community. And I've been working in the LGBT community now since 1993. And let me tell you a little secret. Nothing has changed. In almost 30 years, nothing has changed. I get tired of people trying to make excuses for LGBT people. And that's all it is, is making excuses. You can call it everything you want to call it. But I'm tired of people trying to make excuses for bad behavior. For not acting right. For not doing right. Don't tell me, well, LGBT people have been so abused in the church and they've been so mistreated. That's why when they come into a church, they act like a bunch of jackasses. Wrong. Got news for you, honey. Half the drama that they play out in the church, they were living before they ever came into the church and before they ever left the churches that they were in to begin with. I'm just going to say it plainly today. The same people who come into an LGBT affirming church and they moan and groan about the littlest, tiniest, most ridiculous so-called offenses and they, they turn something small into something huge those are the same people who, when they were in a mainstream church, took the pastor's words and took other church members' words and did the same exact thing. How do I know? I know because I've never been a drama queen. It's never been my cup of tea to overreact and, you know, uh, 
turn everything into hyperbole and, and you know, make a big fuss over it. Uh, no, I, when I was in the mainstream church, I had preachers say a lot of things that I found offensive or that I disagreed with or that hurt my feelings or whatever the case might be. And you know what, Tommy? I got over it and I moved on. It wasn't that big a deal. I didn't leave the church over it. I didn't go screaming and hollering about how the pastor abused me and how, you know, oh, how horrible he was and how terrible he was. I've had preachers do things to me that were so much greater than anything I've had people accuse me of that it's not even funny. And to be honest with you, I didn't, it didn't, wasn't that big a deal to me. And what they did was a lot harsher and, you know, a lot harder to kind of swallow, but I swallowed it. I dealt with it. If I had a problem with them, I talked to them. And we worked our way through it. But you know, one of the simplest ways that God's people deal with things, the Word of God said, if we can't love our brother whom we can see, how in the world can we claim to love God whom we can't see? One of the easiest ways to deal with things is simply this. It's to give our fellow believer the benefit of the doubt. That's what I do most of the time. Mm -hmm. When somebody says something I find offensive or hurtful, I give them the benefit of the doubt. Well, I don't know that they said that just to hurt me. I don't know that they said that to be offensive. You know, um, I've, I've had people leave our church in a huff over things. And I've told Tommy, I'll try to understand that person. I'll literally sit and try to understand why they're acting the way they're acting, don't I, Booby? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll say to Tommy, I'll say, that person's going through a lot of financial trouble right now. They're going through a lot of issues right now. They're struggling. They'd rather work their job and make a buck than come to church. They're letting everything get in the way of their walk with God. And at this point, I got a feeling that they're just using, you know, this little tiny thing that really doesn't amount to a hill of beans. They're using this as an excuse because they've really decided they just want to focus entirely on doing this other thing, whether it be working a job, making a buck, whatever the case might be. And therefore, the easiest way for them to just totally sever with the church and, and follow after what they're really interested in following after, they don't want to look like the bad guy, so what do they do? Oh, the pastor said, oh, 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 you just don't know what he said. Oh, now you've only been in our church for four years, five years, ten years. You only know me frontward, backward, and upside down. I've said things a million times that were as straightforward and as, you know, as, as uh, non goofing off is, is what I said. I, I talk like that. You know how I am. You never took offense before. Well, of course you didn't, because before you didn't have a reason to take offense. Do you follow what I'm saying? Come on, folks. Let's grow up. I'm, I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to move on with the service today. I've shared online. I've shared in uh, emails with our local church folks, none of whom are with us today. Today is the first day that we're able to resume services here in Dallas. We've asked folks who are immunized uh, fully to please feel free to come back to service. Um, if you feel more comfortable doing so and you want to wear a mask, you're free to do so. If you're not immunized, Tommy and I have been, but as many of you know, I am dealing with some pretty serious health issues right now. Uh, I'm, I'm living with uh, leukemia, 
and being treated for leukemia. And I cannot afford to unnecessarily expose myself to anything that could, you know, complicate things. So I've said if you're not immunized, the least you can do is if you come, wear a mask, you know, because we have been immunized, so hopefully that pretty much takes care of us, but still, we have to kind of take extra precautions. When Tommy and I go out to this day, we still wear masks when we go out, and uh, it's just to take additional precautions. But we, you know, we've reopened our home, we've reopened our services to attendees, and we hope that people will come. But I've shared over the last several months, Tommy's uh, bank, his place of employment, was purchased by a much larger entity. And uh, for the first time in many, many years, his job situation is a bit precarious. Uh, he is not employed at the lower levels of the bank. And what I mean by that is he does not work in a local branch. He's not a, a mortgage rep. He is not a bank teller. You know, he's not a bank branch manager. Those people actually right now uh, are safer. But he is up in the administration levels of the bank. When a big, big outfit buys out a, another outfit, they already have all those upper echelon management people. So it's redundant to bring in, you know, for instance, if, if you're a bank, you've got a bank president, and you buy another bank, well, if that bank has a bank president, you don't need him. You've already got a president, you know what I'm saying? And this is what we're facing right now. The bank that bought him out is being kind of elusive about who they're going to be able to keep and who they're not going to be able to keep. And of course they're doing this for self-preservation because in the process of transition there are people they really need to stay and then once they fully transition and everything has gone through you know the process of merging and coming together then they're able to say okay now I don't need you we don't need you we don't need you we don't need you but they don't want people leaving while they're still needing those people for the purposes of transition and what have you so right now our situation is very much up in the air we do not know whether or not Tommy will still be with this bank. He's been in this position now for a little bit longer than he and I have been together, about 20, 21 years, something like that. And uh, so it's, it's a little bit of a stressful time, although the Spirit of the Lord, thank God, gives us peace. So we're, we're not, you know, running around like chickens with our heads chopped on. But at the same time, we are having to do a number of things to prepare ourselves for whatever eventuality might transpire. Should his position no longer be his, and they're saying roughly by October, so we should know, I think, right, Tommy, by October, uh, should his position no longer be there for him, uh, we are going to have to obviously uh, start looking for other employment. This church, I've been in Dallas, it'll be 20 years this coming Resurrection Sunday. If I were pastoring in the mainstream, and I'm not kidding, there was a mainstream pastor in the apostolic movement who ordained me to ministry back in 1994. I believe it was 94. And this man said at that time, he told me, 
He said, Pastor Charles, he said, I'm going to tell you a little secret, son. He said, you, I could easily see you pastoring a mega church. I could easily see you. He said, if you were in an inner city uh, setting in a large city or what have you, he said, I could literally picture your church having thousands of members. Well, I'm not saying I agree with him because frankly I don't, but I will say this, I certainly do not understand why we don't have a whole lot more than we've got. That much I can say. Uh, I think we've got a good ministry. I know we have a fabulous vision because God has given me a vision and He's given me a burden to create a church that is able to offer it all kinds of ministry and all kinds of uh, opportunities for people to worship the Lord, to work for the Lord, to minister to others, to reach out to our communities, to reach out to those who are sick and infirm, to reach out to the homeless, to reach out to those in prisons, to reach out to those who are homebound. Uh, I, I have a vision, folks, but it is a vision that cannot be realized by one man. In the last 19 years, I've tried to do as much ministry as I possibly could all by myself. And frankly, uh, it became overwhelming. This is one reason why for the past uh, year and a half, or, or no, not even, maybe a year or so, we've only been doing our 3 o'clock Sunday service. Uh, I want to go back to having midweek Bible study and all this sort of thing. But you know what? The effort and the energy and the expense that is necessary to do this, uh, it's not worth it when people just don't care enough to participate and people don't want to come and people don't want to support it. It's just, it's not worth it, to be honest. I've pastored churches before I came out in 1989, I pastored three churches in the mainstream. Not a one of them, not a one of them, within a few months, we didn't have at least a bare minimum of 30 to 40 or 50 people within a few months got news for you when I left the people I had at that point were still there we didn't have people you know drama queen and all over the place and leaving over the slightest thing and you know all this foolishness we didn't have that going on folks and I'm gonna tell you what really thrills my soul because I refuse I, I learned a long time ago you cannot be numbers oriented in the LGBT affirming ministry because if you are focused solely on numbers you're going to quit and you're going to quit fast I refuse to be numbers oriented nowhere in the Bible do I see the broadcast stopped okay. and I told everybody to go look for Facebook Live now look Okay, folks, I do apologize for the problem we've been having electronically. Once again, I have no clue what's going on. I can't even begin to tell you what has been happening. Um, we've been desperately trying uh, to just do what we normally do, and everything is going haywire. The only thing I can figure is that... Uh, the, the devil doesn't want our message to go out today because God's given me a powerful, wonderful message. I've got to tell you, for the last 20 minutes, I've been standing here screaming and hollering at, the, uh, at my tablet. <laughs> 
doing a live, you know, thought I was doing the live thing, and I didn't realize that I had to hit a little button on the bottom of the screen that said start live. So I've been standing here talking, thinking y'all were able to watch me and hear me and see me, and in fact, you were not. So I always look at that as being God. So the Lord must be telling me he didn't want you to hear what I was saying. So I'll just uh, move on from here. I was trying to say before our YouTube broadcast, our live, uh, normal live broadcast was interrupted, I was trying to explain to everybody that Tommy, uh, his company has been sold. A much larger entity is purchased. They do not need people in the higher up echelons of management. He is a uh, vice president in his division and his area of the bank. So, I mean, he's up there in good ways. And they don't need these kind of people. But they're being very catty and very elusive as to when they might let people go. So, we don't know whether, you know, uh, come October he is going to continue to have a position or not. I was trying to explain that um, this is very serious because our local church in 19 and a half years has never, ever, ever had consistent support. We don't have the support of people coming out and being part of the service. We have lip service coming out the wazoo. Oh, we got all kinds of people locally who tell us how important our church is. They just don't make the effort or make any sacrifice to be in the service, God forbid. Um, I talked about a little while ago, while the camera was not running, that, you know, you either live by faith or you don't, people. And if you're not walking by faith, the Word of God said, without faith, it is impossible to please Him. So if you're not walking in faith and you're struggling and you're wondering why you're having so much trouble and you can't seem to get out of the hole you're in, I've got an answer for you. It's very simple. Obviously, you do not take the Word of God seriously. Obviously, you don't believe the promises of God. God has said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, doing right. And all these things shall be added unto you. I've preached that so many times, I'm hoarse from saying it. We don't have sufficient local support so that if Tommy were to lose his position, um, you know, I'd be able financially to carry us until he could find another position locally. And because the position he has is not the kind of position, you know, that every bank in town uh, needs somebody in that regard, we're going to have to look for employment for him wherever we can find it in the country. And that means that we will be moving if, 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 one, if he loses his current position. Secondly, if he cannot find a position locally. If he finds something in Florida, then we're off to Florida. If he finds something in Kansas City, we're off to Kansas City. If he finds something in Ottawa, Canada, we're going to Ottawa, Canada. Honey, uh, I've told the Lord. I said, Lord, I've, I've invested 19 plus years in Dallas, Texas. And you see how much people in Dallas, Texas care about whether or not this ministry is in this city. You see. So, if you want to open the door for us to move our ministry, to go to another city, all you have to do is open up a job for Tommy wherever you want us, and we'll know that that's the direction you want us to go in. So that is how I fleece the Lord. That's how I'm believing God. Said, uh, you know, Tommy, because in all these years, the church has never had, I mean, my goodness, we've never even had sufficient attendance support. 
never mind financial support. But we've never had sufficient support uh, for me to be able to carry us even through a short period of time. So therefore, uh, if you know things happen in such a way, then we're simply going to have to sell our house. If he got a position in another city somewhere, we're going to have to sell our house and move to another city. What I was trying to say earlier was that if that happens, the ministry is going to continue, folks. I'm going to I'm going to keep working on trying to build a church. I don't care where God puts me. I'm going to try to build a church, and I'm going to keep ministering online wherever the Lord puts us. It doesn't matter. As long as I can set up a camera and stand behind my little cheap wood pulpit back here, we're going to keep preaching because this message is important to me. Apparently, it's not important to many people in Dallas, Texas. There aren't very many LGBT or non-LGBT people in Dallas area who give a fly about whether or not the apostolic affirming message is preached in this city with power. People don't care. And so if the Lord moves us, He moves us. And that's all there is to it. Alright, I want to move on with the service. I think, I've, I think I've said everything I need to say in that regard. I do have a powerful message. I mean, a powerful message today. And I have a, a feeling that's part of why the enemy is fighting us so hard today uh, in our broadcast uh, you know, area, trying to get this thing broadcasted online. I think that's why he's having a fit, because this message today is going to be very powerful, and I believe it'll be a blessing to you. Uh, I was saying a little while ago, and turns out I wasn't on camera, thought I was, but I wouldn't. Uh, we have to make a lot of adjustments to our worship service locally, because we broadcast our services. Facebook has, on a number of occasions, um, cut us off from being able to do live streams. They've done this because we used accompaniment music that we bought and paid for that is used by churches everywhere all over the world for their worship services. But the minute you put it online, it becomes subject to copyright issues. And now, the interesting thing is, YouTube doesn't give us one bit of grief over it. They tell me that there's copyright, you know, through some so-and-so, and, but it doesn't affect our account in a negative way. It doesn't cause us any problems, because we're using it as it's meant to be used. However, Facebook has on a number of occasions shut us down for 90 days at a clip from being able to do live broadcasts. Because of this, we have to change all kinds of things that we do locally because if we don't, then we're not going to be able to broadcast on Facebook and right now, with all the troubles we're having with our other uh, broadcast equipment and what have you, whatever's going on, we, we have no idea what's going on with that. Whether it's the internet provider, whether it's the software we use, we don't know. We're going to have to figure it out later. What if today were one of those days when Facebook cut us off and we had no way of sharing on Facebook? They, there'd be absolutely no way for us to share our service live. So do you see our dilemma? Do you see why we are doing our services a cappella? Um, I'd rather, you know, have music. Now I do have some good news. I do have some exciting news. And I was hoping that some of our local folks would be here today so I could share it with them in person. There is a couple who come from a one God Jesus name, apostolic Pentecostal background. They have musical skills. They play piano and instruments, what have you. 
and uh, they've got experience with worship and worship leading and this sort of thing. They contacted me, having recently come across our ministry online, and they said they've been praying about it. They live in Oklahoma, but unfortunately they live in the northern area of Oklahoma, so it's quite a ways. And they said they feel like they can come down once a month, one Sunday a month, and they'll be able to come and they'll be able to contribute to our worship by playing live uh, music and what have you. And so that's going to be an enormous blessing because as long as the music is live and we're producing it ourselves, there's no copyright issues. And, you know, I'd love to have a bunch of musicians. Tommy, I started my first church and we had a band, literally, with inside of six months. We had several musicians. We had a drummer. We had a fellow that played two different keyboards. We had a lady that played the clarinet. I, I can't remember what all we had. We had quite a few instruments. You know, with inside of six months, I've been in Dallas for 19 and a half years, and we can't get a soul. Everybody that I've ever talked to, they want us to pay them. As if we could afford to do that. We can't afford to pay the pastor, but we're going to pay somebody to play a piano or play an organ, you know. Because after all, we know that the music's more important than the Word of God is. Anyway, uh, so, you know, we have to make a lot of adjustments. We have to do things differently in order to accommodate sharing our services with you online. So when you tune in and you hear us singing without music, that is why we're having to do this. I wish some of our people were here so that we'd have more voices singing. That would be nicer than you're having to just listen to Tommy and I sing. But we don't, so we're just having to do the best we can with what we've got. But we're going to worship the Lord today anyway, because I'm going to do what's right. I don't care whether anybody else does what's right or not. I'm going to do what's right. And my Bible tells me that if I put the kingdom of God and His righteousness first, all these other things shall be added unto me. Amen. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. I can feel it in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is here. 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 I can feel it in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. I can feel it in the atmosphere. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. I can feel it in the atmosphere. The power of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord is here. Oh, the glory of the Lord is here. The glory of the Lord is here. I can feel it in the atmosphere. The glory of the Lord is here. The glory of the Lord is here. The healing of the Lord is here. The healing of the Lord is here. I can feel it in the atmosphere. The healing of the Lord is here. The healing of the Lord is here. Oh, the freedom of the Lord is here. The freedom of the Lord is here. 
I can feel it in the atmosphere. Oh, the freedom of the Lord is here. The freedom of the Lord is here. Oh, well, the presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. I can feel it in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is here. Here, the presence of the Lord is here. Oh, the presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. Well, I know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, if you don't want to shout, don't bother me, because I came to praise the Lord. If you don't want to shout, don't bother me, because I came to praise the Lord. Well, if you don't want to shout, don't bother me, because I came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I can't stand no dead dry church. I came to praise the Lord. I can't stand no dead dry church. Oh, I came to praise the Lord. Well, I can't stand no dead dry church. No, I came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. Well, I don't know what you came to do. I came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, I don't know what you came to do. I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do. But I came to praise my Lord. Well, I don't know what you came to do. But I came to praise my Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. How great is our God. How great is 
his name. He's the greatest one, forever the same. He rolled back the waters of the mighty Red Sea, and he said, I'll lead you. Put your trust in me. Well, how great is our God. How great is our God. How great is his name. He's the greatest one. Forever the same. He rolled back the waters of the mighty Red Sea. And he said, I'll lead you. Put your trust in me. Well, how great is our God. How great is his name. He's the greatest one. Forever the he rolled back the waters of the mighty Red Sea, and he said, I'll lead you, put your trust in me. Hallelujah. Amen. Here's one from the black church that I love. Down through the years, well, God's been good to me. Oh, down through the years, God's been good to me. I'm telling you, down through the years, God's been good to me. Oh, God's really been good to me all of my life. Hallelujah. God's been good to me. I'm telling you all of my life. God's been good to me. Well, now all of my life. God's been good to me. Oh, friend, God's really been good to me. Down through the years, hallelujah, God's been good to me. I'm telling you, down through the years, God's been good to me. Oh, down through the years, God's been good to me. Oh, God's really been good to me since the day we met. God's been good to me. Oh, since the day we met. God's been good to me. Well, now, since the day we met, God's been good to me. Well, God's really been good to me. Down through the years, hallelujah, God's been good to me. Oh, down through the years, God's been good to me. Oh, down through the years, God's been good to me. Well, God's really been good to me. God's really been good to me. I'm telling you, God's really been good to me.
Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And that's the truth today. I don't understand people that can't put God first in their life that can't put the kingdom of God first in their life, all that tells me is that they don't have anything to be grateful for. Amen. Because I'm here to tell you today, I've got a lot to be grateful to God for. Down through the years, God has been awful good to me. Amen. And for that reason, I'm staying up on the wall. I'm not coming down. Satan, get behind me. I'm giving you no ground. Gonna build what God has told me till I hear the victory sound. Staying up on the wall. I'm not coming down. I'm staying up on the wall. I'm not coming down. Satan, get behind me. I'm giving you no ground. Gonna build what God has told me till I hear the victory sound. Staying up on the wall. I'm not coming down. I'm staying up on the wall. I'm not coming down. Satan, get behind me. I'm giving you no ground. Gonna build what God has told me till I hear the victory sound. Staying up on the wall. I'm not coming down. I'm staying up on the wall. Hallelujah. I'm not coming down. Satan, get behind me. I'm giving you no ground. Gonna build what God has told me till I hear the victory sound. Staying up on the wall. I'm not coming down. Satan gets behind me, I'm giving you no ground. Staying up on the wall, I'm not coming down. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, God's people have faced so much greater opposition over the centuries. When my grandfather was young, his father received, excuse me, his grandfather received the gift of the Holy Ghost. He had been a Baptist. This is at the turn of the century. And my grandfather's father, grandfather I should say, I believe it was, received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Well, he was so excited, he went back to his church and told them about it. And of course, you know what they did? They put him out. Well, he began to search and hunt for other believers like himself who had received the gift of the Holy Ghost and spoke with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave him the utterance. And he finally found some burgeoning Pentecostals is what it was. You know, it's the beginning of the Pentecostal movement. This is around 1900. And uh, he finally found some folks, and they were meeting in brush arbors. They literally took branches from trees and created a covering out in the woods. And they'd go out there and worship and shout and dance and have church. And the Holy Ghost would fall. And uh, they would meet in tents. They didn't have church buildings, you know. They were coming from Methodist churches and Presbyterian churches. And all kind of churches. And God was filling them with the Holy Ghost. And their churches were putting them out. So they would just form these impromptu groups. And the Holy Ghost would have want somebody to preach and my grandfather told me some of these stories about even when he was a kid. Now he was born in 1919. So the Pentecostal movement began right at 1900. Uh, literally the turn of the century. And he said that he would go to these old meetings and he said, man, you wouldn't believe how the power of God would fall in those places. He said the Holy Ghost would come down and it was just the most amazing thing to see. 
He said, and do you know what? Some of them good Baptist folk and what some of them good Methodist folk and some of them good Presbyterian folk would do? They would burn their tents down. They'd go out in the woods and set their arbors on fire. Can you imagine? And yet we got people, bless God, I can't afford to drive to church. It takes 30 minutes to get there. It takes two gallons of gas to go to church and back. And bless God, oh my God, what a bunch of spiritual sissies we got in the church today. Go back to the first century and look at what the first century went through. Honey, I got news for you today. You ain't never known what our position is. What a day, glorious day that will be. Hallelujah. Oh, there is come being a day when no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears to dim the eyes. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, a glorious day that will be. Hallelujah. Look up on his face. There's his face for 
I go to church with my family. He said, he's got aunts and uncles and all that preach and what have you. Uh, he's got quite a, you know, quite a mixture of folks in his family, but they're all devout Christians. And he said, I go to church. And he's part of the LGBT community, of course. Seems like few hairdressers aren't. <laughs> 
And uh, so he told me, I told him I should say, I said, well, you know, if you ever get a chance, you can go online to uh, YouTube and you can look at our services online. I said, that way, even though you're not able to be in the service, you're able to watch the service. And uh, he said, I do. I said, what? He said, I do watch. He said, a lot of times when your uh, video comes up on YouTube, he said, I mean on Facebook, he said, I'll go ahead and watch. And uh, he said, I love, you know, to be able to at least watch it online. And I was shocked because I had no idea in the world that he uh, watched our services at all. Amen. Just goes to show you. We have no clue. I keep begging people to give us feedback to let us know if our ministry has been a blessing to them. You know, you cannot understand how hard it is to do the work that I've been doing for the last 30 years in the LGBT community and the last 20 years in Dallas. You cannot even imagine how hard it is to keep yourself encouraged and to keep yourself uh, motivated to keep doing, to keep pressing on, to stay up on the wall and not to come down. Honey, I'm going to tell you something. You have no clue how hard it is for me. Especially when there are so stinking many people in this city who could come and be part of our work, but they allow everything under the sun except for God to be their top priority. And it's so discouraging, it's so disheartening, you can't even know. And I wish people would understand. If you would give us a little bit of feedback, if you'd let us know if the service was a blessing to you and stuff, that would help to encourage us. But I beg and I beg and I beg and people still, still don't want to be, you know, they still don't want to be put out to to say, great service, thank you, or whatever. Somebody might say, Pastor, you sound so negative. Well, I'm going to tell you a little secret, honey. I've been beat down for so many years and struggling in this work for so many years to keep going. It is awful hard to keep a positive attitude. And I acknowledge that. I'm not happy that it's that way, but I acknowledge that I struggle with it, and I, I've only said it a thousand times, you know, that's why your words of encouragement are such a blessing to us, amen. And D, I do see your comment here, thank you very much. Today is, of course, Independence Day, and we are grateful today to live in a nation where we are free at this time anyway, to worship God even though we're a bunch of people that other churches would push aside and push out the door. They don't want anything to do with us. Well, that's all right. Thank God we live in a country where we're free to go and to create our own churches where we can worship. Hallelujah. You know, there's a lot of places today, folks, where that would not be a possibility. So it's a blessing to live in a nation that believes in freedom uh, to worship God in whatever manner and with whatever doctrine and whatever understanding you may have of Him. Amen. If you have your Bibles today, I invite you to join me. I'm going to try to stay close to the pulpit this afternoon because uh, there's a lot of scripture. Anybody who knows me knows. I'm not one of those preachers who just throws a scripture or two, you know, peppers them in to my messages. I've said many times, I want people to listen to this preacher. I don't care about this one over there, that one over there. I want people to listen to this preacher to know that what I'm teaching and what I'm preaching is the Word of God. I want you to know for a fact you're hearing from heaven and that you're hearing the word of the Lord. And so I tend to use a lot of scriptures. And one of the reasons I struggle with time, keeping my messages, I try to preach 45 minutes or less, believe it or not. 
That's my goal, is to preach 45 minutes. However, if I go over 45 minutes, I want to keep it under an hour at the extreme most. Well, I sometimes struggle with that even. But the reason for that is not simply that I'm long-winded, but that I have so much scripture that I'm trying to use in the course of my message that it, you know, is hard to pack it all in sometime. But I'm going to try real hard today to do so. If you open your Bibles with me to Luke, the ninth chapter, Luke chapter 9, we're going to read verses 57 through verse number 62. Amen. Yes, God is in this place. I'm here to tell you, the Spirit of the Lord is here. Like we began to sing at the start of our worship service, the Spirit of the Lord is here. I can feel it in the atmosphere. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 9, beginning at verse 57, reading through verse number 62. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead. And people think, Tommy, I'm hurt when I say we need to put God first instead of our kids' sports schedules or instead of, you know, uh, work and jobs and making money. They think I'm hurt. Jesus said, uh, you, they don't need you at the funeral. Let the dead bury the dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but... There's always a but. Let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home, at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. God. No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. I want to talk to us today on the topic how and where to focus. This message is not what you might think at first glance it's going to be. So uh, put your seatbelt on because the Holy Ghost is about to rock you. Amen. If you'll bow your heads with me a moment. Master, Savior, soon coming King, we love you, Jesus. Oh, great God, we love you today, Lord. And we thank you for the Word of God. Lord, I begin this service today feeling rather down and a little disappointed and discouraged, but my goodness, just singing the songs of Zion this afternoon. And my spirit is lifted and I'm raised up as the Word of God declares to heavenly places with the Lord. Master, the Word of God that you've given me for this moment is a powerful, wonderful, inspiring, encouraging Word. But it can only go forth with power and might. If the Holy Ghost anoints this old preacher today, it allows me to be a vessel, oh God, that you're able to use to be a blessing and an encouragement to the people of God. Anoint every cell in my body, Master, right now in the name of Jesus. Let the Word of God go forth. Oh God, let it go forth and let it bring salvation to the lost let it bring restoration to the backslider let it bring healing to the sick let it bring deliverance to those that are bound in the name of jesus 
break every fetter today, O oh God, by reason of your anointing, for we ask it in none other than Jesus, holy, precious, wonderful name. Amen. Praise amen. God and amen. How and where to focus. You'll notice in my artwork over my head today, my illustration, I'm using someone holding a camera lens. When you're going to take a picture, if you're going to take a picture, you've got to know how and you've got to know where to focus. Am I telling the truth? Amen. Yeah. You got to know how to focus. You turn the lens a little bit this way or that way and it'll adjust the clarity of your view. And you've got to know where to focus. Honey, if you're not looking at your subject, then any focusing you do is completely worthless. Right. Because if you focus your camera on this over here, and then you turn it to this over here, this over here may not be in focus, am I telling the truth? Mm -hmm. Therefore, if you're going to focus on anything, you've got to focus on what you're trying to photograph. If you're going to focus on anything today as a child of God, you've got to focus on your destination. You've got to focus on where you're headed and where you're going, not where you've been. Jesus said, no man that puts his hand to the plow and plows looking behind him is worthy of the kingdom of God. No, because you've got to focus straight ahead. you got to focus on the task at hand. Am I telling the truth? Yeah. you got to focus on your goal, on your objective. A lot of believers today are focused on making heaven. i got news for you. got a little revelation for you. You're focused on the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. What, Pastor? I thought making heaven was our goal. I thought that's what we were supposed to focus on. Oh, no, 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 no. I told you I was going to help you understand today how and where to focus. Well, obviously, you don't understand where to focus. I'm focused on missing hell. I'm focused on avoiding eternal punishment. I'm focused on avoiding damnation. I'm focused on this, I'm focused on that. I'm focused on being reunited with my mom, my dad, my grandma, my grandpa. Oh, honey, are you focused on the wrong thing? Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Wherefore, seeing also we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Listen. Looking unto Jesus. Did you hear me? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who from the joy was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God where need I focus where should I be focusing today on, on avoiding hell on making heaven no I should be focused on Jesus hallelujah looking unto Jesus Jesus was able to make it through the crucifixion because Jesus was able to focus on the joy that was set before him. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm going to tell you, you're not going to make heaven if you're focused on making heaven. Oh my goodness, I hope you heard me today. You're not going to make heaven, children, if your focus is on making heaven. Only way you're going to make heaven is if you're focused on Jesus. Hallelujah. That's your, that's your true subject. That's where your camera ought to be pointed. 
That's what you ought to be focusing on, Jesus. As long as you keep Jesus in your sights, as long as you keep Him in focus, hallelujah, you're going to make it. Because your goal, listen to me today, your goal is not to make heaven. Your goal is to see Jesus. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Well, if your goal is to see Jesus, why would you be focusing on the pearly gates? Hello now. Mm. No, my goal isn't the pearly gates. My goal is to see Jesus. Why is my goal to see Jesus? Well, I'll tell you why. Because the greatest promise that God has made to His people, if they would believe on Him and trust His gospel, is not that He would give them eternal life. Oh no, that's a big promise. That's an exciting promise. That's a good promise. But that's not the biggest one. You know what the biggest one is? The biggest one is this, Matthew 5, verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart. Listen to me now. For they shall see God. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, have mercy. Oh, I might live forever. I might be re reunited with friends and family who have gone on before me. But, honey, the promise of God's word is the goodness. In 1 John chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Who is the subject of this sentence? Behold what manner of love it didn't say God. It says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God, again in reference to the term Father. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew Him not. Who did it not know? The Father. He didn't change the subject and say because it knew Jesus not or because it knew the Son not. No, no, no. It says because it knew Him not. And the Father is the subject of our sentence. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when He shall appear, who's He? The Father! Oh my God, you better listen carefully now. When He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Hallelujah to God. Oh, we shall see Him as He is. Human beings can't even look at God today. The Word of God said no man has seen God at any time. God told Moses, Moses, you can't look upon me because if you try, you die. But the biggest promise God ever made was not that we'd live forever, but that we would see Him. One of the... Hope I don't upset anybody when I say this, but one of the hypocrisies of Trinitarian theology. And I grew up as a Trinitarian in a Trinitarian church. One of the hypocrisies of Trinitarian theology that really kind of irks me sometimes. They say God is three people. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Well, got news for you. The word God and the word Father are synonymous. If you ever notice in the Word of God, they always, always use those terms interchangeably. Always. They refer to God 
they refer to the Father. When they refer to the Father, you know they're speaking of God. Am I telling the truth? The term Father and the term God are the same. They're one and the same. When we say Father, we're saying God. When we say God, we're saying Father. Therefore, God cannot be three in one because the term God in and of itself means the Father. Are you following me so far? If the term God means and is generally used in reference to the Father, listen, i got some stuff to talk to you about. The Lord focused on the throne, not the cross. As believers, we're called to be focused upon the goal, not the journey. And certainly not the obstacles that litter our path as we journey toward glory. Paul said, laying aside the sin and the weight, he said, whatever you do, don't focus on the stuff that's holding you up. Don't focus on the stuff that's tying you down. Too many people become focused on their weaknesses. Too many people become focused on their sin. So too many people become focused on issues in their life. Honey, God's grace is bigger than your sin. God's grace is bigger than any fault or any failing you'll ever have. Hallelujah. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't ever focus on the things that are trying to hold you back. Because you focus on them, you stop walking. Mm -hmm. You stop moving. But you stay focused on Jesus. The Lord called Peter out of the boat and said, Peter said, Lord, if you say so, I'll be able to walk on the water like you. The Lord said, all right, Peter, come on. Here comes Peter. The Bible said Peter walked on the water. It wasn't like he fell directly into the deep. No. He didn't start to fail. He didn't start to fall into the, the water. He didn't begin to swallow him up until he took his focus off of Jesus. Right. started looking at the waves. <laughs> he started thinking about, well, now naturally, uh, this shouldn't be happening. According to the laws of science and nature, this shouldn't be happening. Uh, Peter, honey, you better get focused on Jesus. You better keep him in your sights because right now you're focusing on why things shouldn't be happening the way they're happening. Got news for you. You, walk, you focus on Jesus and you're going to walk over the stones and you're going to walk over the logs and you're going to walk over the things that seem like they would hold you back and keep you from making heaven your home and seeing the Lord. Oh my God, you keep focused on Jesus and the things that ought to be tripping you and stopping you are going to literally pass right through your legs as you walk on your way. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. Many of God's people today are still focused on the wrong things. They're looking forward to the ultimate prize. Excuse me, they're not looking forward to the ultimate prize, but rather the peripheral blessings. Our goal isn't as children of God to avoid hell. Our goal is not as children of God to avoid damnation or punishment. Our goal is not to see loved ones or to live in a golden mansion. Our goal and therefore that which we ought to be focused on is seeing Jesus. Amen. We are striving in this life to live for the Lord because we seek to see Jesus. That is the ultimate reward and our most valued objective. Only a chosen few will get to experience this glorious revelation. Hallelujah. We discussed how in 1 John 3, 1 and 2, the subject of the passage is the Father. The world knows us not because it knew Him, who the Father not. When He, who the Father shall appear, we shall be like Him, who the Father. Hallelujah. For we shall see Him, who the Father as He is. Oh no, Pastor, you've got that wrong. We're going to see the Son. We're going to see Jesus. He's the Son. You're, you're mistaken. You're confused. Well, apparently the Word of God is also confused. Isaiah 9 and 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a 
son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Singular, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So if I'm confused, so is the Scriptures. Mm -hmm. John chapter 5, verses 38 through 40, uh, 36 through 42. Jesus said, But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father hath given me to finish the same works that I do, bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. And the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. Search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Now listen, that's setting the stage. John 14, 5 through 11. Thomas saith, saith unto him, Lord, now Jesus just said, you've never seen God. Isn't that what he just said? You've never seen his shape. You've never heard his voice. He was talking to people that rejected him. He said, if you read the scriptures, if you search the scriptures, guess who the subject is of the scriptures? I am. Who's the subject of the scriptures? Who's the subject of the Old Testament? Who's the subject of the prophets and the Psalms and the law of Moses? God is our Father. The Father is the... Jesus said, if you search the scriptures, he said, these are they which testify of me. I'm the subject of the Old Testament. But listen, Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how we know the way. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, listen, and have seen him. Children, this would be blasphemy in Jewish teaching. For any man to say, if you've laid eyes on me, you've seen the Father. And notice the Lord is specifically using the term Father. He's not saying if you've seen me, you've seen God, which would be a little more generic. No, he's using the title Father. If you have seen me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father. And it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. This is blasphemy. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? We still got people don't understand that Jesus is the Father. They don't understand that Isaiah 9 and 6 said he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. And they still don't get it. Mm -hmm. They still want to cut God into three pieces and make Jesus the Son number two. Have I been so long time with you, and yet thou 
Hast not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then? Show us the Father. Again, he didn't say show us God, which would be a more generic term. He said show us the Father specifically. Believest thou not that I am in the Father? And the Father in me. There's a very complex relationship going on here. If you remember, I've talked about this before. Like in, in heaven, the Word of God doesn't say that the Lamb is going to sit beside the throne of God. No, 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 no. It says that God and the Lamb sit in the throne of God. The Word of God said no man has seen God at any time but the Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, not who sits at the right hand of the Father, who is part of God. Yes. Hath revealed Him. My God have mercy. Now listen. He goes on to say, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Jesus is literally saying, the things that I do and the things that I say, I do and say because the Spirit of God is inside this body. This body is human. This Spirit is not. Hallelujah. The Spirit within me is divine. The Father, the Word of God said, was in Christ. And again, you notice they always use the term. Uh, excuse me, the Word of God said that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto Himself. Unto Himself. He literally was doing something for Himself. Jesus was not reconciling the world on behalf of somebody else. No, God was in Christ. The Father was in Christ, reconciling the world unto Himself. <sighs> Say, Pastor, why is this even important? Hang on, you'll get it in a minute. Revelation 21, verses 1 through 7. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he, not they, he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away listen and he that sat upon the throne Oh, and he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he, who's he, he that sat upon the throne, said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he, who's he, he that sat upon the throne, said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Oh, glory, listen. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. He that sat on the throne, the same one that said, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Listen, he said, I am he that liveth. Or excuse me, let me go back a little bit. Uh, 
I'm going ahead of myself. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God. Listen. And he shall be my son. Oh, hallelujah. Well, My Lord, have mercy, children. It's there. <laughs> I had to pull another pair of glasses. Out underneath the pulpit, I lost that pair. Glory to God. Oh, Pastor, no, you're confusing things. He that sat upon the throne. We know the Bible tells us. In the book of Revelation, there ain't but one throne. Right. And the only one who sits in that throne is God. Right. All right. But here's how he gave himself away. He said, <laughs> I'm the Alpha and the Omega. Listen to Revelation 1, 7 through 18. Let's figure out who Alpha and Omega is. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Listen to verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come the Almighty. I, John, also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. Was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turn to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, who is called the Son of Man, Jesus, mm -hmm. clothed with a garment down to the foot, and gird about the paths with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were like were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as the flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. This is the same one. He's describing the one who just said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Am I telling the truth? Yes. Listen. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Listen, you want to know who the Alpha and the Omega is? You want to know who said, I will be his God and he shall be my son? Listen, he said, Fear not, I am the first and the last. 
I am he that liveth and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Honey, the Alpha and the Omega is Jesus. The one who said he would be our God and we would be his sons <laughs> is Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh my God, have mercy. Isaiah knew what he was talking about when he declared him to be the everlasting Father. Hallelujah to God. Listen, Revelation chapter 21, verses 3 through 7. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his. I'm sorry, no, I already read that, didn't I? Yes, I did, I'm sorry, I'm repeating. Revelation 22, 12 through 16. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Listen, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Whew. See, here's the exciting thing. The biggest promise God ever made to the church is not that we'd make heaven, not that we'd live forever. It's that, listen to me, that we would see the Father That we would see God. Oh my goodness. It's not about seeing the Son, some second person of the Holy Trinity. Oh no, 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 no. We're going to see the Father. We're going to see God. But listen. He said, my reward is with me. We know this is Jesus. In Matthew 16, 27, Jesus said, For the Son of Man shall come, listen, in the glory of His Father with His angels. And then He shall reward every man according to His works. Well, the Alpha and the Omega said that He was coming and that His reward was with Him. Isn't that what He said? To give every man according to His works. But now here's the key. He said he's coming in the glory of his Father. There's a little problem with that theologically. Because according to the Word of God, God the Father will not give his glory to anyone but himself. In other words, he takes credit for what he does. He does not give credit to someone else for what he's done, nor does he take credit from someone else for what they've done. Right. Now listen. Isaiah 42 verse 8, I am the Lord, that is Jehovah, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another. Jesus said, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father. Isaiah 48, 11, For mine own sake, even for mine own sake, will I do it. God says, I'm going to do this, and I'm doing it for my own sake. Listen, he said, For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another. In other words, he is literally saying, I'm not going to allow my name to be compromised by my taking credit for something I have not done. He said, I'm going to do it for my own sake. I'm going to do it. Why? So that the glory is rightfully mine. Right. 
Oh my goodness, have mercy. Listen. How are we doing? All right. Philippians 2, 5 through 11. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Equal means the same as. Mm -hmm. If I draw on a chalkboard behind me, 2 plus 2, any math teacher will tell you, put an equal sign in there and then write 4. They're going to tell you that this equation on the left and this equation on the right are identical. They are the same. They are expressed differently. They are manifested differently, but they are literally identical. An equal sign means identical, the same. Not part of, not one third of, equal, identical made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross wherefore God hath also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Got news for you, children. That would be inclusive of the name Jehovah. Mm -hmm. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. What did God say? I don't take glory for anything I haven't done. Hello now. Mm -hmm. I don't take glory for something. I said, but when we declare Jesus Christ is Lord, who receives the glory for that declaration? The Father. Hallelujah. Why? Because we're acknowledging that Jesus Christ is in fact God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is returning for a people who are focused on seeing the Father as He is. You do not focus a camera without first setting your subject in front of it. If you focus first on anything else in the room, your subject may not be in full focus when you come back to it. Mm -hmm. You must be looking directly at your subject, seeing it first blurry, and then focusing upon it until it becomes clear. When you're sleeping in bed and you hear a loud noise and you suddenly sit up in your bed and you're blurry-eyed and you're looking, you, you don't, if you heard a sound over here, you don't look that way, do you? No. Nope. No, you're going to look where you think you heard the sound coming from. Now, at first, you may be kind of sleepy-eyed. At first, you might not be able to see real clear. But you're going to look in the direction of where you heard the sound until it comes into focus. Right. Mm -hmm. Looking unto Jesus. Keeping Jesus in our sight because the day is coming, hallelujah, when He's going to come into focus and all of a sudden we're going to realize we're looking at the Father. Hallelujah. We're suddenly going to realize we're looking at the Father. Right now, people can only see Him within a certain light, with a certain amount of understanding. But one day, He will come into focus. In 2 Timothy 4, 6-8, the Apostle Paul writes, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me that day. And not to me only, but listen, but unto them also that love his appearing. 
my goodness, who's the Lord coming for? I'll tell you who he's coming for. Those who love his appearing. Those who are dying for him to get here. Hallelujah. Those who are looking, those who have got their eyes on him. And all they want more than anything in this life is for him to come into focus. They want to realize that great promise God made. We shall see him as he is. Hallelujah. Glory to God in Titus chapter 2, 11 through 14. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope, listen, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, who gave himself singular yes. for us, yes. that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. He was not doing it on behalf of another person yes, of the Godhead. No, no, no. He was doing it for himself. God said, for mine own sake I'm going to do this. And I will not let my name become polluted by letting someone else do something that I'm taking credit mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. Philippians chapter 3 verses 20 through 21 for our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior the Lord Jesus Christ and Titus just said that our great God and our Savior Jesus Christ here Paul says the Savior so there's only one Savior mm -hmm. and he is the Lord Jesus Christ yes who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. When we were created in the Garden of Eden, the Word of God said, man was made how? In God's own image. Mm -hmm. When right. we get to glory, once again, we will be in God's own image. Hallelujah. We shall be like Him. Hallelujah. We shall be like Him. We shall see Him as He is. How? Why? Because we shall be like Him. Him. If you remember, Adam and Eve were able to hide from the Lord in the Garden of Eden when He came down to walk with them in the Garden. How were they able to hide from the Lord? How were they able to even think for a moment that they could keep themselves out of His field of vision if they couldn't see Him? When the Lord came down to walk with them, He came down and manifested Himself in a manner that they were able to see. Because they were like him. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. That's right. We're just headed home, children. We're just headed back to where this whole thing started. It's a big circle. Hallelujah. God is restoring us to our lost estate. In Acts chapter 20, verse 28, the word of God said, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, listen, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. To feed the church of God, which he, who he, God he, hath purchased with his own own blood. In Hebrews 13 verse 12, wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood. Well, that tells you something, don't it? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Either the Word of God is one big pile of confusing mess that, you know, they're missaying things all over the place, or Jesus is God and God is Jesus. Hallelujah. And the Father was manifested in the Son. They're not separate people. They're separate manifestations of one singular God. Hallelujah. And honey, the day is coming. We're going to be able to see God as He is. We're not going to have to see Him in the personage of the Son. It'll no longer be necessary to see Him as the Son of Man. Uh -huh. As a physical manifestation of God. That'll no longer be necessary. Why? Because we shall be like Him. And as we are like Him, we will be able to see Him as He is. Almost done today, children. I'm actually going to keep it under time. We cannot focus on our final goal if we do not in truth know what that goal is. The goal cannot come into focus if we're not looking in the right place to begin with. You can only focus on something that you're looking squarely at. I want to tell you a little secret about us. One God, Jesus name, baptized, Holy Ghost filled, Acts 2.38, preaching, tongue-talking folks. I want to tell you something about us. We've already seen that Jesus is God. Right. We already see that Jesus is the Father. We already see that He is the Almighty. Hallelujah. <laughs> but in the end, our blurry vision will become clear. Yes, thank you. Just so long as we're looking at the right subject mm -hmm. from the start. Oh, there's a lot of people looking at Jesus, but they think Jesus is number two out of three. Uh-uh, uh -huh. wrong. You're looking at the wrong Jesus. He's given us the revelation of who He is. He told us, He said to Philip, Philip, have I been with you so long and you still have the gall to ask me, show us the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Isaiah 9 and 6, His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Everlasting Father, the Everlasting Father, not the Everlasting Son, not the Eternal Son, the Everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. If you're focused on Jesus, but you're looking at the right hand of the throne of God, uh oh. I've got news for you, honey. You're focused on the wrong place. You're hoping to see Jesus. He's not there. <laughs> he will not be on the right hand of the throne of God. He's there. The physical man, Jesus, is there right now. Until all this is complete. At which time the throne of God becomes the throne of God and of the Lamb. Right. Because He is going to claim both identities and sit in the throne as our Father. Yes. You're going to be awful disappointed if you're focused on the right hand of the throne of God looking for Jesus only to find out He's not there. I'm going to tell you where He will be. He's going to be on the throne. Hallelujah. He is going to be sitting there as God and He is going to be sitting there as our Father. We run this race today as we look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We see Him today for who He is. But if we'll focus, we shall one day see Him as He is. 1 Corinthians 13, 12, the Apostle Paul declares, For now we see through a glass darkly, mm -hmm. but then face to face. Yes. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to try in closing today to sing this song. I'd rather just play a video. But I can't for copyright reasons. Once on a hill 
Hallelujah. We Thank shall Jesus. see Jesus just as he is. Glory to God. That is the promise of God's word today, children. That is the promise that we look forward to. That is the hope that we have. One day, he'll come into full focus. And we'll know that the Father was in the Son. Glory to God. Not separate from the Son. Was in the Son. Reconciling the world unto Himself. So that when the glory comes to the Son, the Father gets the glory. Because they're one and the same. Hallelujah. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Henceforth, you have seen Him and known Him. Hallelujah. Father, we love you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, what a wonderful revelation. What a blessed revelation today that we as the church of the living God have. If we'll allow the word of God to speak, we can hear. If we allow the Holy Ghost to lead us and guide us, we can understand. Oh, my God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. We don't serve a God who's three and one. We serve a God who is one. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. And the Father manifested himself in the person of that one we call the Son. Because no man was ever born without an earthly father with only the Spirit of God as His Father. No man had ever had that experience. But we call Jesus the man, the Son of God, after the flesh. But one day, O oh God, we know as things come into focus, as our vision, which today is blurry, becomes a reality and we see clearly as we look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, we know, God, that in the end we'll be looking into the face of God, our Creator, our Father. Hallelujah. The great Jehovah. Glory to God. Master today, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person that would watch this message. Lord, we understand this truth comes by revelation. I can share it. I can try to expound upon it from the Word of God. But Lord, it requires revelation. And when you get that revelation, you'll never let it go. I thank you, God, for the day when you revealed yourself to me as the one eternal God Oh my God, as both God and the Lamb who will sit in the throne and call us His children. Master, we love you today. We thank you, God, for this wonderful message. Not because the preacher is a wonderful preacher, but because the truth is a wonderful truth. Go with us from this place, oh God. Keep us safe in your care. Allow this word to resonate in our thinking and in our hearing until, Lord, we open our spirit up and say, Lord, show yourself to me personally. Reveal yourself to me so that I know 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 who you are. Oh, Master, grant it, God, in Jesus' name. For we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Glory to God. And amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Folks, again, I can only apologize to you so many times for all our trouble that we've had in our uh, broadcast today. I will post, as I've said, a video of the entire worship service. If, if you wanted to see the entire service, including the song service and all that, it will not be from this perspective. It'll be from our regular uh, video camera perspective. So it'll be, a, you know, good. It'll be like you were watching it on uh, YouTube. I don't know about you, but I think this was a wonderful, powerful message, don't you? Amen. You see why the devil didn't want today to go off without a hitch? Amen. And I knew why he was fighting as hard as he was fighting. Because I knew ahead of time what God was wanting to say. Hope you'll join us next.
next Sunday at 3 o'clock Central Standard Time, and God willing, we won't have all these issues next week. God willing, pray for us. God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ is our prayer.